it is your nerdy best friend here with another book study for our nerdy best friends book club. Today we're going to be talking about infographics. So in this category I've divided them up into three sections. First I'm going to call paint by numbers. These are the ones that are absolute templates. You just change out the colors sometimes, the words, some of the graphics, but they're pretty fixed and uh, easy to use but inflexible. The next category I want to talk about are DIY. These are a lot more flexible. They're also a little bit more expensive, even though there are free versions. And they make it so you can add all kinds of interest to your piece. You can add multimedia there. And you can have a lot more flexibility. But again, that comes at a price. Finally, I want to tell you how to not do these on your own at all. Listen. Infographics are harder than you think they are. You have to have a story to tell and map out how you want that story to be. It's not as easy as a social media graphic where you can just kind of say, hey, why don't you follow us or do something fun? You have to have all of the statistics and put things in a line. Now, when we talk about these things, I wanted to talk a little bit about two types of templates you're going to find. Believe it or not, a lot of these categories have tools, have content that is all ready for you to customize. For example, we're living in the COVID era, era right now where washing your hands, these kind of messages are very important. You'll find all kinds of infographics that are already created for those messages. And you can personalize them and make them your own and share them with the people you need to share them with. Um, if you want to say how to stay safe online or what have you, you've got all kinds of options. You can just search and look for content that's already made. Now going back to creating your content, which is the way I usually do them, creating your own content, like I said, can be very difficult. What you're going to have to do is come up with your story and then find things that match your story. This is usually what I want to do. And when I'm looking at these templates, I'm looking for the look and the feel that match the story I want to tell. But it is a much harder way to do it. All right, let me show you some samples. First, let me talk to the one about the one that I have been a subscriber for for many years. It's called Easily. It's like $36 a year and I'm happy to pay it because I really like the variety of templates, pre-done templates they have. Now, like I said, you don't have a lot of flexibility. It's this long. It's, you can change some of the background, but not much. You can change the graphics. So for example, we have the chocolate chip cookie one, right? You click on it. You can change chocolate chip cookies to banana bread. You can change the graphics, but you can't really change the structure or the pieces or the way they're laid out. So you can click on the different words. During our book study live, I'm going to actually click into some of these and show you some of the ways you can personalize them. But it's a little bit inflexible, but I've, I've used it a lot. Now, Canva, our favorite Canva with all the templates for the social media uh, posts and resumes and everything else, uh, about a year ago, I think, started really focusing on infographics. The challenge here is that they are very templated. I like that they're organized by content. Like I said, you can find content out there that you can just copy and use. I would look for the look and see, like the one on the left there has the blue and the white. That's kind of nice. I would look for those kind of things. But the content can be there for you. So you see business infographic. In business infographic, you can see all kinds of ones that they've already pre-made for you that you can start using. Uh, like I said, they are very inflexible. In fact, they're the most inflexible of all these because they are this exact size and no bigger and no smaller. One of the things that's good about all of these now, though, and it used to not be true, is that you can put in graphs and charts that are real numbers rather than it used to be with Canva. You had to like hard code it in. You had to write the word 56% instead of doing something that would a chart that would calculate it for you. It was dumb. But now you've got more options there. 
So I don't know if you saw it, but a few days ago, I wrote about Prezi video. Prezi is that, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, dumb way that you can do PowerPoints that like zoom in and zoom out. You're twisting around, you're turning around. And uh, I never did like them. I never did like them. But I went there for whatever random reason the other day, and they have all kinds of categories they never had before. So Prezi now has infographics. If you look here, posters, social media posts, reports. So you can go with infographics and click in there and again, see all kinds of content, all kinds of layout that you can start with. Do you want to do a note board? Do you want to do a, um, an advertisement, a timeline? All of these things, you just click on them and you can start personalizing them. Again, uh, with Prezi, you're going to have to upgrade to do some of the fancy stuff, but it is a good place to start. Another thing I don't like about Prezi is that you have to, you can't share on Prezi very easily without upgrading. So, hmm, oh well. Prezi has some flexibility that uh, Canva and Easily don't, though. It's not huge flexibility, but watch this. So this is a basic list infographic. You can create, replace everything, but watch at the bottom. You can create longer or shorter pieces depending on what you need. So if you need to add a segment, it's not easy to add a segment in Prezi like this, but if you need to add some pieces and parts, you can change the size of the graphic, which can be very helpful. Now let's go into the DIY. I love Pictochart. I thought it was one of the most uh, versatile and interesting ones from the very beginning, and it still is, and I'll show you why. So like the others, you can click on things to personalize them, to change some color schemes, and uh, personalize all the words. Again, look at this content. Uh, this is a work from home tip sheet. You can personalize this and use it at your office or for your association. But look at the little plus sign right there. You can add a block. You can duplicate a block. So instead of having this is what you have or having to recreate a section like you would have to do in Prezi, even though you can go longer, you can actually make these into blocks and put them together and have a lot of flexibility about that. Plus, you can embed graphics, photos. In some of these, you can in even embed audio and video. This is VizMe. This is, mm, I don't know if it's the creme de la creme, uh, pick to chart maybe about the same. They're both about $300 a year, so they better be darn good. So VizMe, like a lot of these you see at the top infographics, uh, presentations, all of these things now are available. And it's an attractive, beautiful, professional looking infographic situation that you can share and customize for yourself and add that wonderful uh, multimedia as well. All right, last category. Let's talk about not doing it at all. Fiverr has a whole category dedicated to infographics. All these people do infographics. They will help you come up and tell your story. They will make them pretty. They will let you do fun things for your PowerPoints and add them in there. That's what they do, and that's how they help you. If you notice, look at the pricing. It is varied. Fiverr used to be $5. Remember Fiverr, like a $5 bill, starting at $5. But these days, you're going to find a lot of professional freelancers who are asking for more money, and they deserve it. So it's important to go into Fiverr with an open mind that you're going to pay for a really good infographic, 100 $150, but you're not going to have to do it and you're going to get it professionally designed. It's funny, Fiverr was one of the very first places I did an infographic and it was one of the very first Fivers I ever did. So I wanted something that was straightforward about the top 10 tools and a cute graphic that I could share. And I knew I had a vision for something with all these little pop-ups but I didn't know how to do it. So I went on Fiverr, this was 2012, and I asked 
somebody, I found somebody to create a professional infographic for $15. So if you notice, I started on July 30th was when I put in the order. We went back and forth and forth a few times and the person was asking me and all these things like, what is your graphic and what is your vision? And then we settled on a graphic. They made a first draft. I looked at the first draft. It needed a couple of changes and they finished it up. So within one week, rather than me messing around with the infographic, within one week, I had something I could share that was looked cute, was exactly what I was looking at, and uh, I really enjoyed it. So let me go back to it again. Uh, if you see, it even has my nerdy logo, that was my logo at the time, on my coffee mug. It was, I just thought they did a great job. So this is your nerdy best friend. Until next week, Thank you for listening and nerd on.